the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday TV Mass on this feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I'm Father Ernie DeCiccio. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Mississauga, Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received and for their personal intentions, for healing, wholeness, for grace, strength, and courage to deal with all of life's obstacles. The second are Pamela and Michael Saw from Mississauga, Ontario, in appreciation for the daily TV Mass, wishing the staff a blessed and safe year ahead, in thanksgiving for past favors received and blessings in the new year for their family and friends, for good health, peace within the family and the world, and healing for Pamela's mother. The third are anonymous donors from Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, in memory of their daughter, Diane, who died on the 30th of December, 2020, for those who are ill with cancer and for world peace. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, on this feast of the Holy Family, let's thank God for the gift of all our families, imperfect though they may be, because families are nonetheless a gift from God. And we pray that we'll reflect the love of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in our families. Let's also acknowledge our human weakness and ask the Lord for mercy and for peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord honors a father above his children, and he confirms a mother's rights of her sons. Whoever honors their father atones for sins and gains preservation from them. When they pray, they will be heard. Whoever respects their mother is like one who lays up treasure. The person who honors their father will have joy in their own children. And when they pray, they will be heard. Whoever respects their father will have a long life. And whoever honors their mother obeys the Lord. My child, help your father in his old age, and do not grieve him as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be patient with him, because you have all your faculties. Do not despise him all the days of his life,
for kindness to your father will not be forgotten and will be credited to you against your sins. A house raised in justice for you. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has complained against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which blinds everyone, everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God, and whatever you do in word or deeds, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought the child Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now, there was in Jerusalem a man whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, 
This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. When Mary and Joseph had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. I'm sure many of us see the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph as that perfect family. They never argued or anything, right? Who knows if they did or not? But what we know is that they were united in faith and in love. Our families may not be as perfect as the holy family. But hopefully we always maintain that love for one another. I say this to kids all the time when they come and tell me how they fight with their brothers and sisters. I tell them, it's okay, but you're still family. You still have to love each other. And they get it. We can disagree, we can even argue, but we should never stop loving. I love that second reading that we heard today. We actually have it at wedding masses very often from Colossians. And it says, when a quarrel begins, forgive each other. Might be the hardest thing for some people to do, simply to forgive. But when we do forgive, then we have peace. And sadly, there are too many families without peace. And that's because they lack forgiveness. The Word of God has so much to teach us about family life. We're given the example of the Holy Family who loved one another, who believed even though their life was hard, they always believed in their God. They had to endure hardship, living under foreign occupation, flying off as refugees into Egypt. Who knows how much suffering they had to face and how many crosses they had to carry, not just the one that Jesus carried to Calvary. But they had faith and they had love, main ingredients. And the rest of us would do well to practice those virtues of faith and of love and, yes, of forgiveness, because we want to have peace in our families. Call me biased, but I believe we can't really have peace with God unless we have peace with our families. So let's work on it. We don't want to leave this world knowing that we're still not talking to some relative or brother or sister. Let's never get tired of trying to make peace and reconciling. And I love the readings that we have this year. We're given a choice of readings for the feast day. But there's a lot of talking about old people. Some people complain about getting old. They tell them all the time, just thank God that you got there, because not everybody does. And of course, when people get old, they might not have the same abilities they once had. There's that beautiful line in Sirach about showing compassion for your old father, even when his memory fails, because you still have all your faculties, eh? I know this one, because my mom had Alzheimer's. And what do we do with our old parents? We just love them and keep them comfortable and safe. The Word of God teaches us about family. Even Simeon, this old man, became part of the family of Jesus because he went there to bless the child and marry his mother. And I especially like the story about Simeon and even Anna in the longer version. And this is a good lesson for people when they get old and retire. Because then they got more time, maybe, to spend with God. You know, when we're young, we're so busy going about our lives, working, raising the family. I get it. But when we have the luxury of 
retirement and having more time on our hands. Maybe we can finally spend some of that time with God that we didn't get a chance to do beforehand. The Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we won't be as perfect as them. Nonetheless, let's try, all of us, to live as God's family. Together now, let's make our profession of faith. Let's all say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now let's offer our prayers to God. For all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord During this holy season of Christmas, we ask you, gracious God, to hear our community Christmas prayer for those experiencing loneliness and abandonment, that they may find peace and hope in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for peace in our troubled world, for peace in all lands, especially in the Holy Land where Jesus, Mary, and Joseph lived, for peace in Ukraine, and yes, for peace in our families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to hear all of our prayers and answer us with your mercy and with your love. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, Though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. 
And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And as a family of faith, let's pray together as Jesus our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.